Welcome to Worldview Matters, discussing controversial issues, discerning current events, defending biblical Christianity. No topic off limits. And now, here's your host, David Fiorazzo. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. I have another exciting guest to talk to today, Pastor Matt Truell. I want to bring him in. He's the pastor of Mercy Seat Christian Church in Milwaukee area of Wisconsin, founder also of Missionaries to the Preborn. Uh, through his research and teaching on the biblical duties of the lower magistrate, Pastor Matt Truella came across the Madgeburg Confession, and it's, it's an important historical work that became the first in the history of mankind to set forth in a doctrinal format what only later came to be known as the Lesser Magistrate Doctrine. And we've got a book on that that Pastor Matt wrote. Uh, he and his wife Clara live in the Milwaukee, Wisconsin area, and they have 11 children, so they're doing their part. So uh, God bless you, Pastor Matt. Welcome to Worldview Matters. Hey, good to be here with you, David. And we're up to 35 grandchildren now, so the Lord has greatly blessed us. 35 grandchildren. Wow. You're leaving a legacy. Um, well, I want to start off by saying, which I shared with you, I quoted you in my recent book, Assault on the Image of God. I quoted you in a chapter, I believe it was on the assault on uh, the pro-life community or assault on free speech, one of those two chapters. I quoted you, uh, your response to um, Michael Schrader, uh, who was arrested along with three other people. I believe four were arrested at a Pride in the Park event. We don't need to get into the whole thing, so I want to direct people to my book because I detail it in that chapter. There's several pages, and then your whole response to that. I want to thank you, now that I've got you here on the program, for really just sharing the truth and taking using that as a teaching opportunity to talk to those police officers who arrested the Christians and while, while the they were sexualizing young children in the park, the public park on the, at the drag show, and you talked to them afterwards. It was a, one of the most, I, that's why I put it in the book. I quoted your whole transcript because it was one of the most effective, I believe, and respectful, but was almost a rebuke. And I thought that the balance you used in that, and it's available at defytyrants.com, friends, I thought it was just wonderfully done, so kudos to you. I would just love for you to share your quick thoughts on that whole experience. Yeah, no, thank you very much for doing that, David. Yeah, they were arresting young people from our church, and they arrested my 16-year-old daughter even there. Wow. And they had him inside the building across from where, you know, the homosexuals and drag queens were all doing their thing in the park yep. with all those children there. And um, so it was just an off the cuff. There's, I had like 12 officers standing there and I thought they need to understand their duty in the sight of God, that they're not just robots for the state, that they will give an account to him and that when the superior authorities do wrong, their duty is to do right. Their duty is to interpose and not obey the evil that their, the superior authorities are involved in. And that is the doctrine of the lesser magistrate. And I did write a book on it called The Doctrine of the Lesser Magistrate. It mm -hmm. sold about a hundred about 140,000 copies now. And Excellent. um I've been yeah, and I've been traveling all over the country for nine years as of this month, nonstop teaching this doctrine everywhere I go. Um, and God has really used it for good, and I can't thank him enough for it. So that's what took place there. And I think it did impact the officers there in Watertown that day, some yeah. of them at least. Well, there were six or seven of them in the video that I saw, and they had sunglasses on, but they didn't interrupt you. They weren't uh, distracted that you were just looking right at them and just sharing your heart on this important matter. Uh, where's the best place to get that, Matt? Is it defytyrants.com or is it on Amazon? You can get it on Amazon. Uh, the best place, I think, is to get it at defytyrants.com okay. um, because when you order it through there, we add a few extra free items with the book itself. 
Good, good. So you can get that, the Doctrine of the Lesser Magistrates at defytyrants.com. So what would be a practical example of that? Matt, this is the first time we're having you on this program. Uh, A lot of people are going, okay, the Doctrine of the Lesser Magistrates. So they're trying to go understand who the greater magistrates are and what would be the responsibility there as far as accountability. Can you Put that into bullet points. I know you wrote the book on it, but if you can just sum that up for those who aren't familiar with it, please. Sure. Well, we call it a doctrine because it is a Christian doctrine, first formalized, as you mentioned, in 1550 by the ministers of Magdeburg, Germany. The term magistrate is an old English term, meaning anyone who possesses lawful public authority, whether by appointment or election. And so when you have a superior magistrate who does wrong, the duty of the lesser magistrate is interposition, to not obey, and if necessary, to actively resist the superior authority in their lawlessness. So there was a quote by Emperor Trajan. Uh, He was giving a sword to one of his subordinates. He said, use this sword against my enemies if I give righteous commands. But if I give unrighteous commands, use it against me. Mm. And that's the doctrine. In a nutshell, the duty of the lesser authorities in the face of evil or lawlessness by the superior authorities is not blithe compliance. Rather, it's what we call interposition. John Knox wrote the foremost treatise on the doctrine in his 1558 appellation to the nobles of Scotland, wherein he cited over 70 passages of scripture to show that the doctrine is sound in the word of God. Wow. Um, So let's go back to just BC before COVID (laughs) and around 2019. Well, 2020 was the year that the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation driven by Marxists and, uh, you know, godless, demonically driven individuals were wreaking havoc on our nation. Billions of dollars in damage. There were governors and mayors that were telling the police officers to stand down and allow lawlessness and, and it, that was off the charts, Matt. We haven't seen anything like that in, in our lifetime. On our streets, yep. uh, businesses were, were burned. Uh, police cars were blown up. Um, your thoughts on that, that being an example of how uh, they should have spoken up or they should have at least not obeyed their superiors saying, don't enforce the law. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, the police should have protected the citizens and done their duty regardless of what their superiors had said. And of course, that seems to have all been coming down all the way from the governor's office. And unfortunately, each um, lower magistrate blithely complied to the point where after three nights of mayhem, bloodshed and destruction in Kenosha, citizens actually came out with their own weapons at the behest of businesses. Most people know about Kyle Rittenhouse, Mm -hmm. but they have to understand Kyle wasn't out there by himself that night. There were about 200 men armed that night. And how did the police, the rank and file police respond to those men being out there? They actually came up and thanked them for being there and shook Mm. their hands and told them how disgusting they found it, that they were being ordered to stand down and allow all this destruction and bloodshed to go on in the city. Mm. So they knew in their heart they should have done right. Yes. But they didn't right. But I could share a great story with you regarding COVID because you had mentioned that. Yes. Where the doctrine is applied. And we actually rec- um, documented over 500 cases of interposition by lesser authorities, most county officials, sheriffs or county boards or municipal officials, mayors or city councils that acted in interposition against governors and against the state or against the federal government itself. One story I like to use, because it just sums it up, it'll make a doctrine so clear to all your people, David, is they may recall back in May of 2020 how these sheriffs, pardon me, how these governors were making decrees like every week about COVID, acting like little emperors, like the Constitution doesn't exist. And Governor Pritzker, just south of us here in Illinois, He um, was playing the tyrant. He's still playing the tyrant. But in May of 2020, he came out with his latest draconian decree, and it stated, now no businessman anywhere in the state can open their business 
till I say you can open your business. And if you open your business before I say you can, now you're going to be arrested and charged with a crime. Well, the next day in a state with 102 counties, only one county put out their own decree. They gathered their men together. It was Madison County, which sits right on the Mississippi River, directly across from St. Louis. And their decree stated, our businessmen are free to reopen now. And we'll do everything within our authority and power to protect our businessmen. And then they warned the governor and the state not to interfere with their businessmen. Hmm. Well, Governor Pritzker responded in good Pharaoh-like fashion, <laughs> type of fashion, and he held a press conference and threatened Madison County with their federal money, their state money, he had a whole list of bad things he was going to wow. do to them if they didn't go along with the program. Well, they stood resolute. They did not flinch. In fact, Pritzker held this press conference three days in a row threatening them, but these men did not flinch. And finally, seven days after he had made his initial decree, the Illinois State Police declared in a press release they sent out, we will not arrest any businessman anywhere in the state who opens their business before Governor Pritzker says they can. They had decided to stand with the men at Madison County mm. and understand if it had not been for the interposition of that one county, the entire state would have remained under that draconian decree. And understand also, the man who heads up that county is a Christian brother, had read my book on the doctrine two years earlier, had taught it to the county board, and wow. they knew exactly what they're doing. And they've been a burr in the saddle for Pritzker again and again. And the doctrine, because of their actions, has grown massively in Illinois, so much so that a year last year, when the assault weapons ban was passed by the legislature and signed by Governor Pritzker, which is an attack upon the Second Amendment rights of citizens yep. in Illinois, 90 county sheriffs put out decrees saying, we will not go along with this, 90 of them. Mm -hmm. Now, it's still being worked out in the courts, and we'll see how they stand after the courts rule. If the courts rule against them, will they stand? We're praying so. But you see how the doctrine is growing, David, yes. um, around our nation. Praise be to God. Yes, and we need it to grow for such a time as this because we've seen uh, the strong arm of government and tyranny like we've never seen before, particularly in the last three years. We've got to take a really quick break and thank our friends at Harbinger's Daily. We'll be right back with Pastor Matt Truella, DefyTyrants.com. Today's show is brought to you by Harbinger's Daily world news biblically understood stay informed at harbingersdaily.com pastor matt truella of mercy seat christian church in southern wisconsin is our guest today and again the doctrine of the lesser magistrate get the book if you haven't yet we highly recommend it um I want to bring up an article from Ohio that just came out, and this is an example of uh, the House of Representatives over overriding Governor DeWine's or DeWine's veto of the SAFE Act. So what happened was the state of Ohio took the first step to overturn the governor's veto of a bill that protects children from permanently harmful transgender procedures and assures the privacy and fairness for female athletes. That's what the Republicans in the state pushed. They got it through, but the governor vetoed it. And now the House said, no, wait a minute. That's not right. So they, they stood up to him. And Pastor Matt, is, is that a good example of people saying, no, we're, we're going to hold you accountable for this. We're going to override you because that is unlawful what you're doing. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, it's important to understand the founders of our nation understood the doctrine of the lesser magistrate, and they really pillared the thinking behind it into the government that was established here in America, where you have it's a true federalism. In a true federalism, all four of the great governments matter, you know, family government, church government, civil government, all meant to produce the fourth great government in the individual, namely self-government. And within a federalism, when it comes to civil government, you have multiple levels of government, multiple branches at each level. Our founders wanted it that way because they had a biblical view of the nature of man, that he's wicked, 
and in need of a savior. So they don't want power to reside in one man. They were throwing off a monarchy, nor in a small group of men like SCOTUS has become in our nation, an oligarchy. Mm -hmm. They wanted these checks and balances so that if one branch began to pay, play the tyrant or branches began to play the tyrant, another branch or branches would check them, stand mm -hmm. in interposition against their evil. And that's what the legislature has done here. It's the legislative branch checking the executive branch in the evil um, that he wanted to keep fomenting across the state. And they rightly so, wanted to reign in that evil and criminalize it as it should be. Um, so yeah, it was f this thinking behind the Doctrine of Lesser Magistrate was pillared uh, by our founders themselves. So let's talk now, since we don't have a lot of time, uh, about January 6th, the, quote, insurrection narrative that the media has been putting out there, and they're totally behind it, and they're it, there's been so much injustice that we've seen. There are people that are still in jail and there are people that were arrested for just showing up and, you know, for free speech, you know, and here we've got the uh, the government coming against citizens. And it's it's been really disturbing, Pastor Matt Truella, uh, because uh, we, we have the government against we the people, or I should say half the country. If you're conservative, mm -hmm. Christian, Republican, independent, um, they are against you and pro-life. And so we, we had a massive protest, peaceful protest at, for the most part, at the, the nation's capital. And there was a lot that was done to, to draw people in. There, there were just so many problems with what happened. But I just want to get your thoughts because there's people that shouldn't be in prison that are in prison. And there are people that actually aided and abetted the, the, some of the unlawful acts. And there's no accountability there. So just your thoughts on what the media and what the left is putting out. They're framing, quote, Christian nationalists and domestic terrorists and MAGA Americans and uh, any Trump supporters. So go ahead. Your thoughts, Matt. Yes, and unfortunately, much of the conservative media in this country totally abandoned these people and threw them under the bus um, early on and continued to do so. Um, there are two good documentaries out there. One is j6truth.org. I encourage everyone to go to j6truth.org and watch that. And then the Epic Times, E-P-O-C-H, Epic yep. Times, just came out with a documentary also, and it is fantastic and you just go to that website and right now they're showing it you can see it for free excellent um, so i would encourage you people to go there to learn what really went on that they've never heard <laughs> from yep. the normal media quote unquote normal media in the country and uh, filled with so much information that will really make your blood boil and understand it's not just the j6 people that are being mistreated and, you know, I have a friend, he has a wife, four small kids. He just went in in October, never did anything except walk in, was there 20 minutes, didn't damage anything, didn't do anything, walked out. He's a year in federal prison. A guy uh, two miles from where I live was just arrested two months ago, two and a half plus years later. They're still hunting these people down. He's facing 14 years in federal prison now. Um, but they're also going after um, those who protect the preborn. And right now there's 23 people, most of them Christians, yep. who interpose prayerfully, peacefully at the, death of the, at the uh, doors of the death camps, the abortuaries. Mm -hmm. And they've been charged by our federal government, by uh, the DOJ. And they are looking at each up to 32 years in federal prison, David, for their active interposition. You look at how the, the feds have responded to them versus what went on with all the rioting you were yeah. mentioning earlier with Black Lives Matter and on down the line, all the leftists. Um, wow, what a disparity. And so there's actually the trial for um, uh, eight of them already took place out in Washington, D.C. They've been held since September. They won't even get um, their sentence until this May. And those people are all looking at anywhere from 20 years um, up to 20 years in federal prison for, for their actions. Nashville, Tennessee, there's going to be a trial next week 
um, starting on January 16th for eight of the individuals down there, or seven of the individuals down there. And then in April, there's going to be more of them tried in Michigan. Um, hmm. So it is wicked what our federal government is doing. Yes. And this is important where the, the doctrine of lesser magistrate comes in again. There, we're reaching a point with the federal beast where the state officials may have to protect distinct individuals, where sheriffs and counties may have to protect distinct individuals mm. from the federal government. And that isn't without, un understand that's happened before when slavery was in this country, here in Wisconsin, our state officials and county officials protected Sherman Booth, who the feds wanted to arrest, um, protected him time and time again, standing against the Federal Fugitive Slave Act. So we could be seeing the same thing unfolding here as the lawlessness and immorality continues to deepen in our nation. What's astounding here, Matt, and I guess it shouldn't be because we know um, abortion is a sacrament to the left and they want to protect um, the murder of the preborn at any cost. And it's a delusion. It is demonic what they're doing, mm -hmm. what's driving this. It is demonic. It's not, and there's nothing new under the sun. They did it in the Old Testament, sacrificing babies on the altar of Molech uh, to their gods. There's, so there's nothing new, but to, to let it happen to the extent that it has in America to the point of a whole political party, it stands on this abortion platform and punishes those who peacefully just want to go and pray for the mm. unborn or pray for the mothers, um, pregnant women that are going into these death camps, these clinics. And isn't one of the women um, some, something like 70 years old, one of the women that was arrested? She's actually 88 years old. And when she was a child near the end of World War II, she was actually in a death camp over in Europe. Wow. And this is how our government treats her. 88 years old, she's one of the people looking at up to 32 years in federal prison for praying, for just being on a public sidewalk, just wanting to protect life, human life in mother's wombs. This is, it, it is demonic. There's no other explanation. As a pastor, how do you um, encourage your people to raise awareness about what's happening or, or speak for those who don't have a voice? Yeah, well, of course, I speak from the pulpit Christ has given me, and I encourage them that action matters. And it has to be on two levels. You have to go to the people, we have to be fishers of men, and we have to declare truth to men. And we also need to go to the magistrates. It's not an either or, it's a both and. Mm -hmm. If you do one to the exclusion of the other, you're not doing what's properly needed to be done. God's word speaks to every area of life, including the area of civil government. We have a duty to bring to the magistrates what their duty is in the sight of Christ. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to be involved in the civil government matters, and at the same time, you have to be out on the streets reaching the people and fishing for men. Massively important to do. So uh, we are thankful for men of God like yourself. There are some voices in probably every state in the country, but unfortunately it is a remnant. It's a small number of uh, men of God, true men of God, that are preaching the whole counsel of God, trying to confront evil and um, against the deeds of darkness. You know, we're calling it out as Ephesians 5.11 that talks about in other places in the Word of God. Um, I want to mention those sites one more time, Matt, before we move on. January 6th, um, documentaries at The Epic Times and also j6truth.org. And Jeff, if you would bring up the book cover for the Doctrine of the Lesser Magistrates one more time, I want to send people to defytyrants.com. And um, we're just, you're just thankful for this and thankful that it's spreading. And I'm just praise God for uh, just getting your book out there, Matt. And when did you write that? Isn't it, a, is it been about five years or? No, actually it was published in 2013. Oh, So it's okay. been a, for over 10 years now. Well, and uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, happy <laughs> By the way, anniversary. It's spreading around the world too. Um, I gave the rights over to a Christian over in um Af on the African continent, and literally thousands more. That isn't counting all the 140,000 here. Thousands Good. upon thousands more. They can print the book for 59 cents a piece. Gosh. Also, I was in Northern Ireland a couple months ago. They had me there for two weeks 
um, teaching the doctrine all over Northern Ireland. So the doctrine is spreading to other places in the world too. Praise be to God. Uh, amen, brother. Praise God. And in, in Africa, that's good to hear because talk about the, the slaughter of Christians there and the wicked governments. Um, so yeah, we're, we're thankful that uh, this is getting out there. That's what, one of the big reasons I wanted to have you on, and we'll do this again, Lord willing. But um, I'm just encouraged when I see uh, people from your church out there on the sidewalks, preaching, holding up the signs. I'll never forget, um, uh, in my very first book, I quoted a Catholic priest, what was it, Father Frank Pavone, who said, America will not resist abortion until America sees abortion. And what he meant by that is the, the signs, the graphic images that y you know your people show, and some people that, that protest on, in front of a Planned Parenthood, people don't like to see them because they want to ignore that it's happening. They'd rather turn the other way. But America will not resist it until they see that this is going on and they can be convicted. Your final thoughts, Matt? Yeah, no, I agree fully. And I, we always say that if um, the murder of these preborn children is going to be public policy, and it is, yes, then their suffering should be publicly displayed. Yes. If we're going to tolerate their bloodshed, we should be willing to look at the bloodshed that's taking place. I love that perspective because it is public policy. It is. I mean, the federal government, we are, our tax dollars are helping Planned Parenthood. The Biden administration gave them a raise. Since um, the Dobbs decision and Roe v. Wade being overturned, they, Planned Parenthood is now getting more money, over $600 uh, million, I believe, in our taxpayer dollars, and their revenue is over a billion dollars. And that's very public because it's taken money from the taxpayers. I'm preaching to the choir here, Matt, but thank you for your time. DefyTyrants.com and uh, your other website is MercySeat.net. Lord willing, we will do this again. We'll, we'll stay in touch, okay? Thank you, brother. Thank you. God bless you. So, uh, friends, uh, make sure we can spread this, this, the information about this book around because it's such an important doctrine, and I'm so glad that more pastors are starting to take note and, and speak up because pastors, of all people, the pulpits must not be silent. And as Dietrich Bonhoeffer famously said, silence in the face of evil is itself evil. So uh, God bless you. Thanks again for watching, for sharing the podcast, and keep speaking the truth about things that matter. <laughs>